Hey, what's up everybody? I'm Super Saiyan JV. Tell me, have you ever been in a situation like this? Ugh, oh, I just want some hot anime girls to notice me! Well, don't worry, because I have just the thing you're looking for. Recently, I wrote a book that will help you out with accomplishing your dreams of dating some hot anime chicks. It's called... How to Be a Hentai Protagonist. Wait, sorry, wrong one. Here it is. How to be an anime protagonist. Just follow these simple steps in this book and you'll have anime girls banging down your door in no time. Now, I know what you're thinking. Ah, I hate reading! Well, don't worry, because I added pictures to the book. And no, they're not just random pictures of animes that I found on Google. And if you don't like pictures, then let me give me a brief step-by-step -step tutorial on how to be an anime protagonist. Step one, exist. Done! Step two, go to school. But I already graduated. Step three, eat lots of ramen. So that's what this stuff's for. Step four, get your own harem. Wait, how do I do that? Step five, realize that anime and real life are very different. Anime isn't real. So give up on your dreams of being an anime protagonist because you just wasted lots of time and money getting my new book and reading it, you sucker. Ha ha ha. Wait, this part wasn't supposed to be in the video. Uh, buy my new book. It's really great. I should have just turned it into a visual novel. You can get laid in those way more easily. Just look at DDLC! Okay, maybe that's a bad example. When a topic of best visual novel is brought up, what well, usually comes to people's minds? Well, I can already tell you, it's not this hunk of junk right here. For me, my favorite visual novel is still to this day, Doki Doki Literature Club. This game was so unique and different compared to all the other visual novels out there. I mean, in the beginning it feels like a generic romance visual novel slash dating sim, but as you play on, dark and creepy stuff starts happening, and it really makes you say, WHAT THE FUCK?! This game became a massive success, and became a really popular game to play through on YouTube. After the game released in 2017, there have been tons, and I mean tons, of visual novels being released yearly, even to this day. I mean, if they release a visual novel called My Girlfriend is a Mermaid, then you clearly know that people love these things. Back on topic here, I've always been a big fan of DDLC. How big of a fan? Well, big enough to play a bunch of mods on the game and make a sequel to another video where I talk about other mods for the game. Yeah, I'm a pretty big fan. I even have a Monica Nendroid. My mermaid girlfriend wouldn't like that. But yeah, in the past, I talked about a bunch of mods in Doki Doki Literature Club. And well, there's a ton of other mods that I still want to check out. I mean, who wouldn't want to play a mod where everyone makes the main character fail No Nut November? Anyways, we have a lot of mods to talk about today, so let's get started, shall we? The first mod we're going to take a look at is called Fruits of the Literature Club. Oh, I didn't know a literature club was getting on fruits. I hope they have durians. This mod is a pretty interesting one. It completely redesigned the story of DDLC in a fun and unique way. In this mod, the main character is completely different compared to how he was in the OG game. He's no longer a shy Nataku, and is much more of a Chad now. He moves into a new town and attends a new school. At school, he meets Sayori, who becomes his friend and invites him to the literature club, where he meets the rest of the girls. And then the story really kicks off. Basically, the game starts off with the MC moving into his new home, which is the exact same home from the original game. He goes to school and meets Sayori, who is the girl who lives next door to him. She tries to convince him to go to her club after school, and even though he says no at first, she does manage to convince him to attend it later on. And when he arrives, he meets Monika, Yuri, and Natsuki. The beginning portion of this mod plays a lot like the original game, but as you play on, you get to know the girls way more, and it gets pretty dark too. You have four routes you can play through, each involving one of the girls. Each route has a good and a bad ending, and trust me, you'll want to get that good ending. The bad endings can lead you to death! And no, that's not a joke. You can actually die in this game, if you're not careful. If you make a bad choice any time, this can lead to both you and one of the girls dying. No, Monica, don't die! We're supposed to go on a date to McDonald's next week! Now, I played through this mod, and I honestly enjoyed it a lot. Each route lasts around 10 hours, and they contain a lot of new story elements that are all really entertaining. In the beginning of the game, the girls talk to you about the school's festival coming up, and you get the option to talk to one of them to start their route. Now, as you already probably know by now, Monica's my favorite, so of course I had to play her out first. And honestly, I enjoyed her out. Well, sometimes, anyways. Playing through her route has you help her out with setting up the school's festival, and after the festival is over, the two of you start to develop feelings towards each other. And I love you, Monica. I'll leave you be. The two of us become boyfriend and girlfriend and get to learn more about each other. But then everything goes downhill when a person in a car comes out of nowhere and shoots the main character. Yeah, let me be real here for a bit. The story in this game can get a little too weird at times. It gets really confusing too and there are plenty of times where I was like, What? 
Now, apparently in Monica's story, she's being hunted down by bad people because she resembles Sayonika here. Er, no, wait, sorry, I meant Mori. No, wait, uh, her name is Izuki in this mod. Yeah, there are plenty of moments in her out story that just didn't add up very well. And as for the rest of the girls, their stories were hit and miss as well. Natsuki's story was honestly my favorite out of all of them, as you help her out with her daddy issues. Do not take those words out of context. Sayori's story is good, but could have been way better. The main thing with her story is that she gets kidnapped by a psychopath and he had to save her. I like the action in her story, but I wish we got to dive deeper into her character more. Then there's Yuri's route, and it was good too, but also felt kind of underdeveloped. She also gets kidnapped like Sayori and deals with a lot of stress, and the main villain in her story is kind of generic and lame. So yeah, the stories in this game were decent, but there's so many things I had issues with. All the villains in each route are just so lame, and the girls themselves all acted like lame damsels in distress that rely way too much on the MC and treat him like he's some ultimate hero. Like, holy crap, look at that guy, he's so amazing that I can't live without him. I'm also not really a big fan of some of the artwork used in this mod, like it's not that bad, but it looks like it was drawn in a hurry. So yeah, in the end, I thought Fruits of the Allergic Club was kind of good, but definitely not the best mod out there. Up next we have DDLC Encore. This game is supposed to be a direct sequel to its follow-up to the original game. Now this mod has a big emphasis on decision making. Every choice you make in this mod can lead to some severe consequences, so be careful. What's also cool about this mod is the fact that you have the ability to switch between character routes at almost any time. So say if I was doing the Yuri route and thought to myself, you know, I don't like Yuri's hair clip that much, so I'm gonna dumb it for Sayori. Well, I can do that in this mod. I'm sorry, Yuri. How could this happen? This game also has 8 different endings, with 2 per route. The game also gets really dark, especially if you get a bad ending. So you're probably wondering, what's the story like? Well let me explain. The game starts out by asking you some questions, like if you confess to Sayori or not in your original game. And if not, who did you help during the preparations for the school festival? These choices will steer you in the right direction towards one of the girls routes. Now Monica is not available for these character choices, but if you play through the mod and choose to always spend time with her, then you'll be able to unlock her route. Anyways, the game starts off with the main character waking up in space. Oh god, I knew I shouldn't have stayed up all night playing Mario Galaxy! He then sees a dark silhouette, and it turns out to be Monica. I guess she was also playing lots of Mario Galaxy. He says she must have made a mistake in her coding and ends up sending us back to our room where we say hi to Sayori who came over to watch the school with us. Now if you don't do the Sayori route then things will play out a tad bit different here in the beginning so keep that in mind. I mean hey she's not dead so that's a plus. The mod also takes place right after the festival so when you go to the Lizard Club you'll be hoping to see new members arrive. So yeah Monica confirms that no one else ended up joining the Lizard Club which is sad but oh well. Eventually the game will ask you who you want to spend your time with and this is where the routes really start. The game takes place in 5 days and each day consists of you spending time with one of the girls depending on what route you take. On the night of day 1, if you spend time with Sayori, Yori, or Natsuki, you have a nightmare where the one you spend time with gets killed by Monica. Although if you spend time with Monica, you get a much happier result. As you continue playing, you'll get to go on dates with whoever you try to romance. But every day, something strange and or scary will happen depending on the choices you make. For example, playing through the Sayori route can lead you to finding her hung corpse before she comes back to life and says some really dark and disturbing things. Oh my gosh, you said kill! That's very inappropriate! Uh, did she just kill me? Nope, it was just a dream. False alarm, everyone! But yeah, as you can clearly see, the game has a ton of dark and disturbing moments. That'll make you feel really uncomfortable. Now, I don't want to spoil too much more of the story, so let's talk about my actual thoughts on this mod. I thought it was really good! The story was really enjoyable, and being able to spend time with all the girls is great. I also really did like all the new art shown off in some scenes. It looks really great. There's also 20 new music tracks added to the game, and they all sound good. I also love all the horror elements too, and the decision making makes every playthrough feel very stressful, but entertaining and unique. So yeah, overall, I love the DLC Encore. Heck, I thought it was so great after I beat it, I was like, Encore! 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 Shut up, I'm suffering here! Okay, sorry! Up next, we're gonna take a look at Doki Doki Exit Music. Yeah, get out of here music, I don't need you anymore. Now this mod is a bit different compared to the other mods we played so far. This mod is all about Natsuki and trying to help her deal with her abusive father. This is another mod that can get pretty dark at times, so keep that in mind if you're planning on playing this sometime in the future. Also, this mod did get a remake in 2021, and the title was slightly changed to DDLC Exit Music Redux. Now, I played the Redux version because, you know, it's better, so 
Yeah, let's jump into it. This game is split up into multiple acts, and like I said, they can get pretty dark. So it's the day of the festival, and the main character goes to Sayori's house to walk to school with her. But he walks in right as Sayori is about to hang herself. Thankfully, we stop her and end up taking her to the doctor's office. She ends up feeling better during the doctor's visits and ends up staying there for the rest of the day and doesn't go to school. The MC goes to the literature club later, and since he missed the festival, the other girls are very upset with him. He says that something bad happened to Sayori, but doesn't tell him the exact details, since Sayori probably wouldn't have wanted that. He then runs into Natsuki, who seems to be in a relationship with him apparently, and it turns out Natsuki also missed the festival today too, due to issues with her dad. The next day Natsuki admits to MC that her dad has been hurting her recently. MC promises to her that he will save her from him, and wants her to stay with him for a little while. So she ends up agreeing, but needs time to repair. The following night, we come to her house to get her out of there, but find out that she's been beaten up pretty badly by her dad. Thankfully, we bring her back to our house safely. Huh, nice shirt you got there, Natsuki. And you're right, I am a little weird. At the same in the night, we wake up to see Sayori enter MC's house, and Natsuki ends up telling her about her abusive father. Natsuki also stops going to school for a short period of time, and during that, we get to spend lots of time with her. We cook together, we have fun together outside during a snow day, and we even get to go out to eat together and enjoy a nice date. Honestly, I enjoyed getting to hang out with Natsuki in this game. She was always my least favorite out of the four Dokis, but after playing through this mod, I kind of appreciate her more and more as a character. Another thing that happens in this game is the MC dealing with severe stress. He nearly has a seizure multiple times in the game, and it usually happens every time he thinks about something bad, like Sayori almost killing herself. As for the rest of the mod, it gets way more depressing, but I don't want to go over any more spoilers, so let's move on. The game does have a few different endings, and honestly, I'm not really a big fan of any of them. They're really disturbing, and I kind of wish we had a nicer, more fulfilling ending. There is some bonus content too, where you can learn more about Sayori and the other girls, which is pretty cool. Also, yeah, this is one of the DDLC mods where you actually get to see the main character. And honestly, this design for him is alright, but definitely not my favorite. I just don't really like his haircut. He looks like he's wearing a wig! So overall, I thought Exit Music was a good mod, but it definitely wasn't my favorite mod. I don't know, maybe it just got too dark and depressing for me, and that kind of made me not enjoy it as much, but the overall story and writing were pretty good. It's just not really my type of game, though. Alright, that last mod was kind of depressing, so how about we look at some more funny DDLC mods? You ever just look at a DDLC cast and think to yourself, Yo, what if Sonic the Hedgehog was in this game? Well, fear not, people, because that's why we have this mod called DDLC DX Battle Plus Ultimate. What an amazing title, am I right? Take all these logos, put them together, and bam, there's your title. Now, as of now, this mod is not complete, and only a demo of it is out, but this mod made me laugh, so I had to talk about it in this video. The story in this mod involves the main character waking up late for school one morning after staying up all night playing Sonic Frontiers. I bet he hated that pinball minigame just as much as I did. Sayori is seen waiting for him outside, and they're about to go to school, but all of a sudden, a whoosh sound effect happens, and next thing you know, Sonic the Hedgehog is here. I'm Sonic! Sonic the Hedgehog! And he's even wearing his outfit from the murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, how cool! I hope he doesn't get murdered here. The MC is shocked to see Sonic in front of him, and when he asks Sonic how he got here, he ends up dodging the question. Which is kind of suspicious, not gonna lie. Sonic then asks if Sayori is okay, turns out she ran away screaming as soon as she saw him. Oh, I do that too sometimes. Ah! Sonic then says that we should go check on her, and we both go to school together. MC tells Sonic to hide in the club room and wait for him. And then we rush into two class. Yeah, the game has some grammar mistakes. Quick call grammar police! At the school, we meet up with Sonic in the literature club room, but then Monica walks in and sees Sonic. She gets freaked out a little bit, and then tells us that Sonic can't be here. But before we can get Sonic out of here, Natsuki comes to the room, so we hide Sonic in the closet. However, Natsuki keeps all her manga in the closet and wants to get it. The MC ends up getting it for her, and Sonic even reads some of it, and it makes him laugh. Haha, -ha, big titty anime girls! Then Yuri and Sayori show up, and when they all hear laughing in the closet, they open it up to see Sonic, who says his classic catchphrase. Uh, meow? Then the mod ends. Now remember what I said, this is only a demo at the time of me making this video, and from what I've played so far, it's an alright mod, but nothing too memorable. Again, when or if the full mod gets released, maybe it'll be better, but as of now, it was just an okay mod, but it did make me laugh a little bit. Oh yeah, the ending of this mod was also pretty funny too. This game is now over. Thanks for playing the demo. You did it! Congrats! You can close out now. Uh, You can close out? Why aren't you closing out? You're making this awkward. If you don't close out, you're an idiot. This is annoying. Just close out! Do it! Do it! Fuck you! Seven scary ends-
You know what else DDLC is missing? Yep, exactly. Shrek! So yeah, this is a mod called Sansa Skeleton in Doki Doki Literature Club. And it's a pretty strange mod, but also pretty freaking hilarious. The game starts out with Sans talking to us, and he also warns us that this mod has spoilers for Undertale. So yeah, if you haven't played it, then don't try out this mod. Or play if you want. I don't really care. So in this mod, the Literature Club is expecting a new club member to show up today. But instead of the normal MC showing up, it turns out that Sans' skeleton is the new member. And yes, his sprite is the exact same one used in Undertale. So he looks really out of place here. Yuri and Atsuki for seeing a talking skeleton, and Monica turns into a character from a Michael Bay movie. <laughs> Sans introduces himself to the girls, and he even jump scares Natsuki. <laughs> After Sayori introduces the girls to Sans, he ends up leaving for a bit, pry himself away from his work. When he comes back, Sayori tries to give him a cupcake, but he says no, and offers her some ketchup? Uh, why? He even gets the option to say yes or no to this. And come on, who wouldn't say yes to a free bottle of ketchup, right? Eventually, Monica tells everyone to go home and write a poem to share with the club for tomorrow. Sans falls asleep as she says this, so she just leaves him a note. And then the mod does this weird text-to-speech thing and fast-forwards us to the next day. Sans ends up coming to the club late, and man, do I love his entrance here. Yeah, as you can clearly tell, this mod's humor is amazing. And the animations are really funny too. Also, yeah, Sans didn't end up writing a poem, and just had his brother Papyrus do it instead. Sans eventually shares a poem with all the girls, then the game starts to follow along with the DDLC script a bit, with Yuri and Natsuki getting a fight, and Monica asking Sans who he wants to spend time with. Unfortunately, the mod ends here, but maybe we'll get the full release sometime in the future? Eh, it probably won't happen. So in the end, I enjoyed this mod. Yeah, it was pretty short, but it was also pretty freaking hilarious, and I recommend it to both Undertale and the DLC fans. Alright, so that was a pretty funny mod, so let's go ahead and jump into the next one, shall we? This one involves Sayori, and she's very hungry in this mod. That's all I'll say for now, but let's jump into it. This game is not suitable for people who forgot to eat lunch earlier. Dang it! I knew I was forgetting something! So this mod is a pretty short and simple one. It's called Sayori Gets a Burger. In this mod, Sayori wakes up one day and is very hungry. But whoops, she forgot to buy some groceries! So she decides that she wants to go out to eat somewhere. And before I continue, I just want to point out, why is she at the main character's house? Ugh, whatever. She then tries to pick a restaurant to go to. Wait, Nep's Pizza. Like Neptune from Hyper Dimension Neptunia? I didn't know she owned a pizza place. Help me! This monster turtle wants my peaches! She then finds a coupon for a place called Functional Burger. Yeah, I sure hope their burgers are functional. And she can get a free meal with this coupon. She then arrives at the restaurant and starts looking at the menu. For six hours! Yeah, she spends six whole hours staring at that menu. And the food guy starts to get really impatient. It's like that one tea in Spongebob where Patrick can't decide what he wants to order. Oh. Finally she picks something right before the restaurant closes. And oh boy, is it a big order. I feel so sorry for the food guy. Eventually the food is done, Sayori brings it back home. Or MC's house. And she eats all of it super quickly. The mod then ends with Sayori's hunger being gone. And she goes out to bed. Although there is some weird text at the very end. I don't know who exactly is talking right now here, but it's never explained, so who cares, I guess. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the mod. The next mod we're going to take a look at is called Doki Doki Do Lip Club. And this is a really weird mod. I mean, just look at his title screen. What the fuck is going on here? Why does Yuri look like Kronk from the Emperor's New Groove? Natsuki looks like she switched bodies with the Hulk. I don't even want to talk about what's wrong with Monica here. And yet Sayori looks like the most normal person here. I'm kind of scared to start playing this game to be honest, but let's at least try it out. The game starts off with the main character waking up late because he drank way too much vodka the night before. Yeah, something to keep in mind while playing through this mod is that everyone is Russian now. I don't know why, I guess the devs just love buff Russian chicks. We don't meet up with Sayori or, sorry, Slaviori. Like, Slaviori, Slaviori, give me the formulae. She's mad at us for taking a while to get ready, and then she ends up throwing some vodka in our garden. Yeah, she has a vodka drinking problem. Apparently, she also drives a tank, too, and even says the F word. Come on, Slaviori. Did Ryuji give you his F word pass? Also, apparently, she's constantly squatting in this mod. I mean, can you imagine constantly walking around like this? 
She hadn't asked if I had joined a club yet, and even though I didn't, I promised her that I will. And no, I didn't just promise her that because she was trying to crush my bones and squat on me. And yes, Lady Yori, I do lift. I mean, I lifted my phone off the desk earlier. So we end up going to the lift club and meet the other three buffed up girls. And oh god, do they look hideous. First off, we have Monica Lee's, which is just Hercules, but with Monica's hair and outfit. Then we have Yoronk. Oh, so she was supposed to be Kronk from the Upper's New Group. I was right. Then we have the amazing Buff Suki, and she talks in a third person. Yeah, all these girls have changed a lot here compared to how they were in the original game. Don't get a Buff Suki goat! Oh yeah, speaking of Buff Suki, she ends up breaking her father's legs. Well, at least now maybe he won't be mean to her. Also, when you go to visit Slave Yori, the scene acts out a lot like the scene before she killed herself in the original game, but thankfully, it was just a joke. Now, this mod, you can romance one of the four girls, but in order to do that, you must choose the correct movement or workout in order to woo the girl you want. You can dab, starfish, squat, or give a thumbs up in the beginning. Each one of these moves represents one of the girls, so make sure you choose the right one per girl. Eventually, the MC will volunteer to help one of the girls out with the festival. Now, obviously, I had to help out Buff Suki! I mean, come on! Who wouldn't want to date a girl who's basically the Pink Hulk? But the game ends up sending me on a date with Monica Lee's? Huh, I guess even this mod knows I like Monica the most. Now, each day you get to do an activity or a movement that involves working out, and I'll help you impress the girls, and help you romance one of them. I don't have much more else to say about this mod, really. It was pretty hilarious, not gonna lie, and I thought it was one of the funniest mods I ever played for this game. Is it any good, though? Uh... Kind of? It's more like one of those it's so bad that it's good types of games. I mean, the character art looks ridiculous, but also hilarious. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Doki Doki Do Lift Club. The next mod we're going to take a look at is called DDLC, Time to Be an Epic Hero. Heck yeah, I'm an epic hero now. So this mod is about the MC trying to rescue the girls from dangerous situations. Because, you know, he's trying to be an epic hero. The main gimmick for this mod is the fact that it plays out like an RPG. There will be certain moments in the game where you fight a bad guy, and the game will have you make a quick decision that usually involves attacking or evading. These fights act out like a quick time event too, so you gotta be quick when deciding what your next move is gonna be. Every time you pick an option, the text will show if it was successful or not, and it will also show both your HP and your enemy's HP. Honestly, I like the style of gameplay for this mod. However, I do wish the fights happened more often in this mod. It just kind of felt a bit underused, and when this is the main selling point for this mod, it's kind of a letdown that it doesn't happen very often. As for the game's story, I thought it was decently good. This mod also has four routes, meaning you got four different stories to play through. What's also cool is that you can marry the girl you're trying to romance. So now I can finally marry Monica. I do wish the stories were a little bit better though. Like, I think it would have been way cooler if we got to learn more about the girls and why the MC has become such a big hero to them, but eh, whatever. I mean, at least make Monica's sister look a little bit different than her. This looks like an OC, a Sonic fan would make or something. Overall, I enjoyed the mod, but I do feel like it could have been a bit better. All right, so I got one more mod I want to talk about in today's video, and this one has been in production for many years now. Now, this one is a sequel to the mod I reviewed in my first DDLC mods video, so yeah, let's go ahead and check out Doki Doki Literature Club World of Dreams Act 2. Yep, it's time to finally take a look at and review Doki Doki Literature Club World of Dreams Act 2. Now I reviewed Act 1 of this mod back in 2021, and I also did a playthrough of it. And honestly, it was one of, if not my favorite DDLC mod out there. And after a long wait, they finally got Act 2 released to the public. And I've been doing a playthrough of it on my channel, and I'm really enjoying it. Is it better than Act 1? Well, yeah, I honestly think it is. Anyways, let's go ahead and start talking about the actual mod, shall we? Now, if you haven't played through Act 1 or seen my review of it, you might be a bit confused at times. Act 2 takes place right after Act 1, so from here on out, I'm just gonna assume you all know what happened in Act 1. If not, then what are you even doing here? Go play the mod. Or watch my video. I don't care. You could literally do nothing and I wouldn't care at all. Alright, let's continue. At the start of Act 2, we get to see the player, Meiji, Monica, and Sayori, try to come up with a plan on how to fix the world of DDLC. We eventually come up with the idea to hit the new game option, which will reset everything and send us back in time to the first day of the week when the game takes place. So this means everyone outside of the player, Meiji, Monica, and Sayori will forget everything that happened this week. Also, you guys remember the Christmas mod for World of Dreams that I reviewed last year? Well, it turns out that was all a dream that the player had, which explains its strange ending. So the player goes out to hit the new game option, and then the whole world gets reset. I mean, hey, when life sucks, just hit the new game option, right? So the whole world resets him, and the player wakes up in Mayday's body again. They hear a knock at the door and find Monica is there, and she's been badly beaten up. Yeah, it turns out her parents 
became far more ruthless in this new timeline that we created, and beat her up for leaving the debate club. So now she's going to be staying with us again. And since Meiji's parents aren't home, that means we're free to do whatever we want. Also, in this new timeline, it turns out that Meiji has been taking pills, because now he has narcolepsy, which is basically a condition where you have an extreme tendency to fall asleep. When we tell Monica this, she tells us to stop taking these pills because it might be harmful to us. Also, Sayori will be staying in the space classroom from now on so that she'll be safe from the game. If she tries to leave, then a noose will try and kill her, which is really scary. And since she's technically not in the game now, it's revealed that in this new timeline that she died as a baby. We even run to her mother on the way to school and it's also revealed that she now has Sayori's depression since she lost her baby and now she's divorced. So we end up going to school but Monica stays home for the day since she got hurt. Our plan is to investigate the literature club to see if everything's alright. We plan to just visit for now, but won't decide to join or not because the player is worried that Yuri will become too attracted to him and will turn into a yandere, like how she did in Act 2 in the original game. At school we run into Mori, who seems like she's the exact same person from Act 1. We also run into Kazooie, Kazooie, or Banjo and Kazooie, I don't know. And yeah, her hair is brown again, which is weird because on the first day in Act 1, she had dyed her hair to a different color. She also seems to be hiding something, but we'll find out what it is later. As for Kotonoa, well, she's very suspicious for some reason, but more on her later. Holy crap, is that the Moto Moto? Oh, wait, your name is Natsuki Muramoto, not Moto Moto. Whoopsie! So yeah, we introduce ourselves again to Yuri and Natsuki. Keep in mind, they don't remember anything that happened in Act 1, and they don't even know who Sayori is. We tell them we might join the Ledger Club, but I had to think about it first. When we go home, Meiji starts to develop a bad cold, which is bad for both of us since we're sharing the same body. We end up going on a walk with Monica and stop at a church to get out of the never-ending rain. Yeah, in Act 2, the rain here never actually stops. I don't know why, but it's kind of depressing. When we're in the church, we meet a very sick lady named Miyuki. Wait. Like Miyuki from a regular at Magic High School? Nope, turns out this lady is actually Yuri's mother, and she has cancer. It turns out Yuri's been taking care of her mother a lot since her father passed away, and she's afraid that she'll lose her mother too. Also, Yuri and her mother speak English a lot, and the player accidentally talks to them in English. Again, whoopsie! Afterwards, we come back to the space classroom, and we learn some more coding tricks, so now we can add two more bedrooms. And guess what? I get to sleep with Monica! Oh, 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 Monica, you're looking so hot today. Oh, no, wait, Monica, don't, please! We also see Kazooie running around outside, and there's something wrong with her, because she looks at both Meiji's house, and then she goes over to Sayori's house, and just stares at them. So there's definitely something up with her. The player also gives Sayori the ability to look at his thoughts using the console, which can be good or bad, but just in case, he wants her to watch it, in case anything bad happens. The next day, Monica comes back to school, and two of us get to eat lunch with many of the girls. We also see Kazooie and I get into an argument, and wow, was it entertaining. Bitch, please! You honestly think that I would want to be friends with an arrogant little slut like you? Oh! Someone who used her body and money to get whatever she wants? Oh! oh! Man! Who's daddy's little princess? Oh! But then when we're walking back home from school, we see Yai getting sexually assaulted by a man. Turns out this man is her abusive uncle, so we step in to save her. Player and Meiji get really angry at her so-called uncle and start calling him IT. Yeah, I remember that movie from 2017, it was pretty good. This guy on the other hand is the worst. In fact, the two of us get so angry at him that both of our texts combines and we nearly end up killing him. Yeah, in Act 1, if the two of us got really angry, we'd go insane and it felt like the two of us were merging together. And yeah, as you can see, the same thing happens here again in Act 2. We bring Yai back home with us and when she wakes up, we ask her what exactly happened to her. But before we can get enough information out of her, Monica and even Mori come inside of our house. Yai messes with and insults Monica, and Monica ends up getting super angry and starts attacking Yai. But when Monica calls Yai a princess, she ends up glitching up, so we bring both her and Mori into the space classroom, and they both start glitching out like crazy. We mess with the character files and they had to stop their bodies from glitching. I tell Monica the truth, Sayori slaps her, and then we get to kiss Monica. Love this art here, by the way. Then we use the computer console to give everyone their old memories back from Act 1. And this causes a lot of problems. Especially for Yai and Mori. But when they finally recover, we end up explaining to them that their whole world is a video game. And yeah, of course, they don't take it too well. 
We also find out that Sayori used to be good friends with the eye back in the day. She used to be really shy too, but went down a dark path due to the torment she suffered. What's especially nice about this part of the game is that we get to see Yai have a ton of great character development. So yeah, these two end up joining us on our mission to save this world. We also end up finding out that Kazooie never actually forgot what happened in Act 1, so we end up telling her everything as well, and she joins us in helping saving the world. We also find out that Kotonoa's parents are apparently Yakuza members. Man, she got really evil in this timeline. What, did she get bit by that evil bug and fairly odd parents or something? As we play on, the game gets even darker, with us suffering from hallucinations. The fuck? What the fuck is that? Bro, that fucking scared the shit out of me. I literally nearly jumped out of my fucking chair. What the fuck? That scream. What the fuck? Yuri starts turning to a yandere slash act to Yuri and nearly stabs us. And Natsuki's dad, who looks like a catchy from Persona 5, nearly shoots up to school. Oh, we also almost have sex with Monica. Not really a dark thing, but I thought I'd say it anyways. Yeah, things get pretty fucked up in this game. We also bring Natsuki into his face classroom, and she nearly breaks her neck while her hair slowly turns pink. But Kazooie saves her by smashing her head with the pot. We give Natsuki her memories back, and she learns the truth, just like everyone else. And she also joins our party too. And while the rest of the game has a ton of amazing moments, I think I'll stop spoiling things here and start to wrap things up for this review. Overall, I thought DDLC World of Dreams Act 2 was amazing from start to finish. The characters, the story, the art, and even the music was amazing. This mod also felt like the perfect blend of great storytelling with the perfect amount of horror. I also love how the characters all have such great character development. And yeah, after playing through Act 2, I can for sure say that it is better than Act 1. And yeah, World of the Dreams is still my favorite mod for DDLC, and I recommend it to anyone interested. So yeah, those are some more Doki Doki Literature Club mods, and honestly, I had a lot of fun playing through them. Sure, I didn't like everything about all these mods that I played today, but still, I love DDLC, and I just love playing through mods. It's too bad my book on how to be an anime protagonist did not sell very well, but hey, look on the bright side. At least my book on how to be a hentai protagonist sold very well. I mean, hey, I almost had sex with Monica, so that's gotta count towards something, right?